Lord, who throughout these forty days for us did fast and pray, teach us with you to mourn our sins and close by you to stay. As you with Satan did contend and did the victory win, Oh, give us strength in you to fight, in you to conquer sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In Babylon there lived a man named Joachim, who married a very beautiful and God-fearing woman, Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah. Her pious parents had trained their daughter according to the law of Moses. Joachim was very rich. He had a garden near his house, and the Jews had recourse to him often because he was the most respected of them all. That year, two elders of the people were appointed judges, of whom the Lord said, Wickedness has come out of Babylon from the elders who were to govern the people as judges. These men, to whom all brought their cases, frequented the house of Joachim. When the people left at noon, Susanna used to enter her husband's garden for a walk. When the old men saw her enter every day for her walk, they began to lust for her. They suppressed their consciences. They would not allow their eyes to look to heaven and did not keep in mind just judgments. One day, while they were waiting for the right moment, she entered the garden as usual with two maids only. She decided to bathe for the weather was warm Nobody else was there except the two elders, who had hidden themselves and were watching her. Bring me oil and soap, she said to the maids, and shut the garden doors while I bathe. As soon as the, maidens had, the maids had left, the two old men got up and hurried to her. Look, they said, the garden doors are shut and no one can see us. Give in to our desire and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you that you dismissed your maids because a young man was here with you. I am completely trapped, Susanna groaned. If I yield, it will be my death. If I refuse, I cannot escape your power. Yet it is better for me to fall into your power without guilt than to sin before the Lord. Then Susanna shrieked, and the old men also shouted at her as one of them ran to open the garden doors. When the people in the house heard the cries from the garden, they rushed in by the side gate to see what had happened to her. At the accusations by the old men, the servants felt very much ashamed, for never had any such thing been said about Susanna. When the people came to her husband Joachim the next day, the two wicked elders also came fully determined to put Susanna to death. 
Before all the people, they ordered, Send for Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah, the wife of Joachim. When she was sent for, she came with her parents, children, and all her relatives. All her relatives and the onlookers were weeping. In the midst of the people, the two elders rose up and laid their hands on her head. Through tears, she looked up to heaven, for she trusted in the Lord wholeheartedly. The elders made this accusation. As we were walking in the garden alone, this woman entered with two girls and shut the doors of the garden, dismissing the girls. A young man who was hidden there came and lay with her. When we, in a quarter of the garden, saw this crime, we ran toward them. We saw them lying together, but the man we could not hold because he was stronger than we. He opened the doors and ran off. Then we seized her and asked who the young man was, but she refused to tell us. We testify to this. The assembly believed them, since they were elders and judges of the people, and they condemned her to death. But Susanna cried aloud, O eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die, though I have done none of the things with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel the elders said, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other, that I may examine them. After they were separated one from the other, he called one of them and said, How you have grown evil with age. Now have your past sins come to term passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent and freeing the guilty, although the Lord says, the innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, tell me under what tree you saw them together. Under a mastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, your fine lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, Tell me, under what tree you surprised them together? Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you also your head, for the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, Blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked man, says the Lord, but rather in his conversion that he may live. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. When the, then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such, such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued to asking him, he straightened up and said to them, let the one among you who, who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away, one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on do not sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. I love the readings we have today. Susanna's story is one of the most eloquent in the Old Testament scriptures. In it, we see the wisdom of the prophet Daniel, as well as the mercy and justice of God. This story is certainly echoed in our gospel reading about the acquittal of the woman caught in adultery, although Susanna was actually innocent. In the gospel reading, we see the wisdom of Jesus brought about as it is with the mercy and justice of God. But sadly, we see in both stories also the fickleness of the human heart and the evil and treachery that makes up some of our darker moments. To those who seek to pervert justice and to collude with others against some other person, these readings expose those evil thoughts and flood the darkness with the piercing light of God's justice. No one has a right to judge others, especially when their own intentions are not pure. Only God can give real justice, just as only God uh, brings ultimate mercy. To those who are victims of oppression, these readings give hope that God in his mercy will always walk with those who walk through the dark valley and give to the downtrodden the salvation which they seek. God is ultimately very interested in the kind of justice that is characterized by right relationships with one another and with him. 
It is the desire of God's heart that this kind of justice would be tempered with mercy and would go out and lighten all the dark places of the earth. Today, we are called upon to right wrongs, to be completely honest and forthright in our dealings with others, to seek to purify our hearts of any wicked intent, and most of all, to seek to restore right relationships with any person we have something against or who has something against us. Our prayer this day is that God's mercy and justice would reign and that God's kingdom would come about in all its fullness. Gathered as one, we lift our prayers now to God, and our response to these prayers is, Lord, have mercy. For Pope Francis and all clergy, that God's hope would shine abundantly through them as they lead the church in the world today, let us pray to the Lord. For world, national, state, and local leaders as they make decisions to fight this virus, that they would be guided by God's wisdom, and that their decisions would be received with the spirit of cooperation and unity, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have been affected with COVID-19, especially those seriously sickened and in hospitals, and for those suffering loneliness and anxiety as they self-quarantine and self-distance from others, let us pray to the Lord. For families impacted by measures to protect us all, for those whose employment is endangered, for students who are homebound, for the lifting up of all of our bodies and spirits, let us pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed, that God's peace would be with them, let us pray to the Lord. For Ruth Chamberlain, for whom the Mass is being offered today, let us pray to the Lord. Now let us offer our own intentions in the silence of our hearts. For these prayers, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, we humbly place our prayers before you and ask that you hear and answer them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring about, may bring before you as the fruit of our bodily penance a joyful purity of heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and Richard, our Apostolic Administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And for those who are praying with us at home, um, I invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The communion antiphon. Has no one condemned you, woman? No one, Lord. Neither shall I condemn you. From now on, sin no more. Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may be constantly cleansed of our faults, and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward toward you through Christ our Lord. Some announcements for our friends from St. Mary's. We want you to know that your parish staff here at St. Mary Immaculate prays for you all each day. We are working from home and meeting online to plan as best we can to keep serving your spiritual needs. Please keep us in your prayers also. Currently, as you know, our building is closed. You can still reach us by phone at 815-436-2651. While the Adoration Chapel is closed indefinitely, you can always visit our online chapel. There is a a special page for Eucharistic Adoration accessible through our internet homepage at smip.org. Please watch our website, social media, and flock note messages for updates and virtual events. We will continue to live stream Mass daily here at 9 9 o'clock a.m. in English and on Sundays at 1045 in Spanish. We know that many of you received our Easter mailing recently. Please know that we had to order that mailing right after Christmas and were not able to stop it in time. So that information that is on the mailing is incorrect. Per Bishop Pates, we will not be open for Holy Week. We are in the process of planning the live streaming of all Holy Week services, beginning with Palm Sunday and including the Mass of the Lord's Supper for Holy Thursday, 
the Good Friday Liturgy, the Blessing of Food on Holy Saturday, the Great Easter Vigil in the Holy Night of Easter, and Easter Sunday Mass. We will provide information on those services soon. And until then, stay, stay well, stay safe, and stay home. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Set free from their sins, O Lord, we pray, the people who call upon you, that living a holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every trial through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. At the cross her station keeping Stood the mournful mother weeping Close to Jesus to the last Through her heart his sorrow sharing All his bitter anguish bearing now at length the sword has passed. Oh, how sad and sore distressed was that mother highly blessed of the soul begotten one. And a prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen.